In this video, we're going to take a look at Word Chapter 2 Skill Based Training for Office 2013 in My IT Lab. A couple things we're going to work on here include document formatting, um, using some styles, uh, and really kind of fancying up the document so it doesn't look just very plain and boring. It really looks very professional. First thing we'll do is we're going to select all of our text. I do a control A for this. It's a shortcut key that always will select all of your text. Um, I find it a little bit easier and more accurate than trying to select and drag over all of your text. Sometimes that doesn't quite get everything. Maybe there's some hidden characters in there that you're not grabbing. So the control A is a good tip here. We're going to change the font. Uh, pretty simple thing to do here. We're going to go down and select Times New Roman and we're going to increase that to a size 12 font size. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select these five paragraphs. They're really hardly paragraphs. Uh, they're really bullet points and that's what we're going to eventually turn them into. And what we're going to do is we're going to open the font dialog box launcher. These are all things that manipulate fonts but we want the whole menu so we're going to click this little arrow here that kind of brings this out so we can see everything. We're going to choose small caps and we're going to choose bold. And when we close it, you'll see that those lines change to a small caps form where everything's really in an uppercase uh, font, but you'll notice that the first letter of each of those lines is slightly larger. So it's the lowercase are really just small caps. Next, we do a control end. Control end always will take you right to the end of the document. Control home will always take you all the way to the beginning. If you do just home by itself, it takes you to the beginning of the line, and end by itself takes you to the end of the line. So just a couple quick shortcuts to help you move around a little quicker than sometimes using the mouse. And we're going to select this last line, and we're going to select the text effect. And it's kind of a complex one here. These are our text effects. We're going to hit the arrow here, and long story short, this is fill blue, exit one, yada, yada, yada. We really want row three, column three for this one. And you'll notice it makes it look kind of cool rather than just the plain old uh, times 12 that we had going on. We're going to select the text in the first body paragraph beginning with the if you enjoy taking digital pictures. We'll select all of this. And with this one, the remaining stuff will all autocomplete. What we've essentially done, what my IT lab has done for us, is it selected everything but our title. And we're going to change the line spacing to 1.15. This is the line spacing options. You can choose how much space you want between each of your lines. Sometimes in those lines they're they're really close together which makes it a little hard to read and kinda strains your eyes you don't want to spread it out too much otherwise then it just kinda looks like you're wasting space on the page 1.15 is kind of a nice fit and it makes it a little easier to read now one thing that I see a lot of students run into is they'll select 1.5 just if it says 1.15 make sure you're selecting 1.15 and not 1.5 we're going to change the alignment of our text to justify. Um, everyone pretty much understands what left, right, and center do, but justify always tries to make the text go right up against this side, just like it goes right up against this side. It makes it look like a more square block of text um, and kind of fills up that extra white space on the side. We're going to change the paragraph spacing to six point after. Now to do this one, uh, we're going to go in here to the paragraph box and we're going to look at the paragraph spacing. After we can set this to 6 and say OK. And what that does is after each paragraph you get a little bit of extra space. So it's a little bit easier to see where your paragraph breaks are going to be, especially when you're using a justify style like this. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to find where your paragraph ends and the next one begins. So it's nice to have that different paragraph spacing. Now, the second line, right up here near the beginning, 
we want to right align this second line. Now you don't even have to really highlight it, but if you click on the right alignment, it'll take that entire line and right align it. And we're going to add a first line indent to the first body paragraph. Now we're simply going to click here at the very beginning of this first body paragraph and we're just going to hit the tab key to make that indentation. That way it looks more like a traditional paragraph. We're going to do another control end to get all the way to the end of our document. And now we're going to display the ruler. We go to view, we can view the ruler. Now we have this up here that can help us uh, figure out where our tabs are going to go. And it also can help us understand where things are going to fit on the page. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the tab selector uh, to a right tab. This right here, up here in the corner, looks like a letter L. That's our tab selector. And right now it's doing a left tab selector. If you click it once, it goes to a center. Click it again, it goes to a right, kind of like a backwards L. And we're going to click it 5.5 inch mark on the ruler and that's going to put a tab right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open the paragraph dialog box and paragraph is on the home tab. We're going to open this dialog box. We're going to click on the tabs button down here. We're going to click on this 5.5 tab and we're going to select a dot leader. Now what that means is Everything in your tab isn't going to be just blank stuff. It's going to be dotted. Sometimes you'll see a table of contents with this dot leader. And then we'll say OK. You'll see how this works here in a second. We do a tab. And based on this tab space right up here, it's going to make that tab go to that spot. We're going to type in Monday through Friday. And then after we do that, we're going to press tab. And you'll notice it jumps us way over to here. Now we're going to type in 9 o'clock space dash space 4 o'clock. And we'll hit enter. We're going to do another tab. We're going to say Saturday tab 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. You have to tab, type these in exactly right. You might notice down here the instructions will jump a little bit. That's my IT lab recognizing that you've completed that step. So that's a good thing. You want to see that. Um, even though it means sometimes you need to move the cursor down here a little so you can see what else we need to do. And then we're going to hit enter again. We're going to press tab and we're going to say closed Sunday. And you don't have to do anything else. My IT lab will check that for you and That'll be the end of that question. Now we're going to select the three tab lines at the end of the document, the ones we just made. We can use that old trick, control end, to get down there. Oh, actually we can't. Um, in Word you'd be able to do that, but if you hit control end right now, it thinks you're doing the wrong thing. The computer is just really trying to figure out if you've completed the steps that it's asking for. So in this case, we can't do a control end. We're going to just scroll on down and go find those. And we're going to select those three lines. We're going to open the borders and shading dialog box. Now these are shading and borders. If you click the arrow on borders, borders and shadings, it's right down here at the bottom. And here's the borders tab. And what we can do here is we can say a shadow border around that stuff. Uh, click the box, not the word. Sorry about that. And we want the double underline style. You might need to scroll down a little depending on how much you can see on your screen. And we'll say OK. And when you do that, you'll notice there's now a shadow border around that selection of text. And there's a double uh, underline or a double line that's blocking that. Here's the shadow back here. It's kind of on the right and bottom. So it kind of pops out at you. Kind of looks a little 3D. And now we're going to change the shading over here in the shading side of things. We're going to go with blue accent 1, lighter 60%. And I like how my IT lab says this. It's row 3, column 5.
and now that entire box is shaded so now it's kind of this 3D look with double out, uh, double line outlines and it's shaded it looks pretty cool um, just jump down here take a look at it it really looks a lot nicer on your document than just the plain old text and it brings your eye right to it so if somebody's looking for those hours it's really easy to find those quick okay control home takes us back to the very very top and we're gonna select the five bolded paragraphs the compose with care and that set and we're gonna click the numbering arrow and these are our numbering options we're gonna click the arrow and we're gonna select the third option on the first row So the third option in the first row is this one, the, the number and then the right parenthesis. And now we're going to scroll down to the depth of field section on page two. So go on down here, you're looking for this one right here. And you want to select the four paragraphs here, beginning with the aperture of stop and ending with point of view. So we're going to apply a hollow round bullet to these. So since those are bullet points that we want to make, we're going to select the down arrow here. And this one's the hollow round bullet. And it'll automatically indent those and put the bullet there in front. Now, you might think, gosh, it's a lot of work to go and change the font color on all of this different stuff. And how do I even know what font color I would want to use in my document? Well, the nice thing about what Word has here for styling is if you click the design tab you can select a theme and we're going to choose organic unfortunately these don't seem like they're alphabetized so you kind of have to dig around a little bit there it is it was up there near the top and what this is going to do is it's automatically going to change your color style to stuff that matches so if you're like me and you don't really have a good eye for what colors match pick a theme because it's going to pick the colors that actually are designed to go well together. It's kind of like when you go to, the, to do some painting on your house or something like that. You go and pick those swatches that all have colors that complement each other. You know, This is very similar to that. And we want to do a color scheme that's a little bit different. Maybe we like organic, but we want to choose violet too. Because we like it with more of a, a purple styling. It always helps to pick something that matches your company logos or company colors. And maybe this is a good way to find the colors that you want to use at your company. Okay, so now we're going to select some text, beginning with courtesy of Philips Studio and ending with when taking pictures. So we're going to select this bunch right here. Everything else auto-completes, and that's going to be everything on down. We can go to page layout, and here we're actually going to create multiple columns. So rather than having everything in one you know, normal page, now we're going to have two columns. And our text will look like this. And sometimes this is a little more appropriate for your document. We're going to center our first line, which was not included in that selection, um, which is why when it centers, it's going to go here, not in the center of this column. To center, We'll go to the Home tab and we'll just click on Centering, just like we would center any text. We'll click in the first body paragraph here, and we're going to drag the first line indent marker to the left margin. That's our first line indent margin uh, marker. We're just going to drag that right off to the side, and that gets rid of that indent that we had created at the very beginning. We're going to select the heading lens, which is right up here at the top, and we're going to apply heading one style. Now, the nice thing about using heading one style is anytime you use this, you don't have to go back through and choose your color and your font and your size. It's very easy to commonize all of the things that would fall under what you would consider a, a top level heading. So now we're going to open the styles pane and we're going to modify the heading one style to include a double underline. They give us a nice hint here too. 
uh, because it is tough to find. Now down here at the bottom, we can actually modify the style. So we've got heading one already selected. We'll choose to modify that style, and here it is. And the hint is, we're going to click. Um, we're in the modif we're in the manage style, um, and what we're going to do is, we're going to modify the font. So we're modifying our style, and in this dialog box here, we're going to go down, click Format, Font. So this one's kind of buried. You have to kind of dig through it. Um, and what we wanted to do here is we wanted to include that double underline that we've been using before. That's the only change we're making. We'll say OK to that. We'll say OK to this. We'll say OK to this. Actually, we're going to leave this one open. We're just going to close out that Styles pane. Um, let's see here. Maybe I missed something here. We modified the style to include the double underline. Oh, looks like we're kind of stuck here. Ah, here's where it got me. And this is something that you'll find as you go through my IT lab sometimes. It helps to read two, three, four times when you're looking to do something. It doesn't want you to click OK, and that's what it, what I did incorrectly. It wants me to close the Styles pane. You know, sometimes you fall into habit with computers and you think, you don't even need to read this stuff. It's OK and cancel. Well, in this case, we want to choose Close. And we're also going to close this Styles pane here on the side. So, going a little too quick can sometimes cause you a little frustration. You might think, man, I'm doing this right. I'm clicking exactly what I need to do, and in fact, I even modified the style correctly. You got to think like what the computer is asking you to do here. What they wanted us to do was really choose close. Okay, uh, next thing is in the design tab, we're going to select the lines simple style set. Now, these are all of our different styles here. We'll just drop down here, and we're looking for lines simple. Now, usually, you'll get some tool tips that pop up here, which makes things a little bit easier to work with. Um, I believe it is this one. There it is. Um, so the one we wanted was actually I think it was this one. Hopefully, in, in your case, you will see the tool tips. Sometimes, when you leave your mouse, over these, the tooltips don't pop up. So just keep an eye out for that. That can be a little troubling. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Home tab. We're going to select the second line. We're going to change the font color. Here's our font color modification. And we want Plum. This is the row of Plum, I believe. Uh, again, if tooltips are not popping up for you, this can be a little bit more difficult. I'm pretty sure this is the way the way to go, because uh, we want row five, column five, so five over, five down, and it took it. Good. We're going to select only the text in the first bulleted line. We're looking for the uh, aperture f stop. And that's the one down here on page two. We're going to format it with a solid round black bullet. So even though we had the hollow bullets, we're going to switch that to the solid round black bullet. Scrolling down here a little, um, oops, we're going to click the bullets arrow, and then we're going to choose to define a new bullet. So maybe you don't like the bullets that are there, maybe you want to change the bullets that are there. You can do that, and in this case we're going to change this using the font. Now you can do a lot of cool things. You can use even a picture if you want as your bullet. But we're going to just simply change this like a font. And our font color is going to change to plum accent 1 darker 25. So our font color, now you might think this isn't really a font, but from the computer's perspective, that solid bullet is actually a font. So I believe this is our plum 
accent one and darker 25 percent is I think the second from the bottom here let's see if that takes again tool tips make all the difference in the world for these but if they're not appearing and sometimes they don't in my IT lab um, it, it actually is kind of inconsistent uh, sometimes you have to kind of muscle through uh, select only the text in the first bulleted line so I'll say okay to this we'll make that change have uh, an effect and you'll notice now it's plum now with the insertion point here uh, we're gonna make a new style entirely so we're gonna open the styles pane we're gonna create a new style and we're gonna call it bullet paragraph and the cool thing about this is we've already selected that first line it's building this new style from what we already are working with we build one little piece just the way we like it and now we can build a whole style from that um, so since we've already selected that we're going to create this and now scrolling down here a little what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply that new bullet paragraph style to these three pieces see bullet paragraph up here how there's the the purple bullet you can select that and it'll automatically change all of those bullets you don't need to do it one by one by one and then the last thing to finish this step is to close this styles pane and then our question is complete next thing we're gonna do here we're gonna do our control home to go very back to the very beginning we're gonna click on the view tab we're gonna change the view to outline now the cool thing about this and you'll see this again if you're working in the PowerPoint chapters you can work on a document in an outline format almost like maybe if if you used outlines when you took notes in class you can see your document as a hierarchy rather than seeing it as just a bunch of text so um, now we're gonna show the outline through level three meaning it's gonna go a little bit deeper and here's basically the breakdown of our document we're gonna drag the position heading for um, this blurry images due to camera shake above blurry images due to focus it's gonna take this whole section of our document and move it above the other one so you'll notice the crosshairs appear when you go over the plus sign just left click and drag and it may not look like anything's happening but just drag it up above the other one we're also going to expand out shooting from below double click on that and it'll expand it out and then you can see the actual text in that section so similarly what we did we just took a whole section of our document and put it in a different place all in one simple movement and then we're gonna just close our outline view now we're back to our normal view of our document now we're going to go to uh, the insertion point to the left of depth of field there it is just to the left of this we're gonna click the insert tab and we're gonna insert a picture so insert pictures now in my IT lab it's already got us in our my documents or our my pictures folder and we can choose the kayak picture and just say insert you'll notice it's sideways we simply want to rotate that picture um, over here is where we rotate objects you can hit this arrow, arrow, arrow over here on the right and we want to rotate it to the right so sideways we're going to rotate it up now you might not think of word as a photo editor it's certainly not its main call to fame but there are some neat things you can do with this picture to make it really fit your document you don't need to go and modify it in Photoshop or something like that you can modify some basic stuff right here in word we're gonna change the width of the picture the picture selected we're gonna to go to the format the under picture tools and over here is our width and 1.5 we only want it to be 1.5 and I'm just gonna click off over here so that this will take effect and you'll notice the picture change sizes 
We're going to click on layout options, which is this little pop-up that happens just to the right of our picture. And we're going to choose square text wrapping. Uh, again, tooltips really help us here, uh, but I believe it's this first one. And then we're going to just uh, close this layout control. You can also do wrapping up here in the wrap text option, although you'll see that you can't always choose it there. You sometimes have to use layout options. That's because my IT lab is trying to show you that that's how you can do it. Um, now we're going to apply a picture style. With our picture selected, click on the format tab if it's not already there. And here's our picture styles. We're going to pick from all of these different picture styles. We want first row, sixth column. So it kind of changes our picture to be a little bit fuzzy on the outline, so it kind of blends into the picture or er, into the document a little bit better. We're going to go over here to corrections, and we're going to select brightness zero, contrast plus twenty percent. It's the fourth row and the third column. Tool tips should pop up here too. They're not for me, but this is the one we want. And it'll slightly change the brightness and the contrast of that picture. So they're kind of quick selections. And if you look closely in that option, it already shows you the preview of how that would look brighter or, or less bright, etc. Uh, next step, we're going to do a control home, get back to the very beginning. We're going to click the insert tab and we're going to draw a text box right over here. So under text box, we'll draw a text box. We're not really drawing this, so don't worry about too much accuracy, but you're just going to drag this text box into this area. And then that text box will appear. We're going to resize the text box and we want it to be 0.6 high and we want it to be 2.5 wide. You might notice that when you make these changes, sometimes it takes a second. So you might go on to start editing your next piece, then my IT lab catches up with you. You might just have to do those steps a little bit slower. Just wait for the system to keep up. Because it's trying to check your work on the fly here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is contact us. And we'll press enter and we'll put in our phone number 610-555-0021. Now we're going to change the text wrapping. Again, you might want to go up here. In this case, we're going to use the text wrapping in our layout options. And we want it to be top to bottom. What that means is don't try to fit in text around this. Push that text out of the way above and below you'll see it does exactly what we would want. We don't want this text wrapping in around on the side. We're going to click the dashed line. You may or may not see a dashed line here, but just click on this so that we're selecting the text box. And we're going to then center that text box. We want to make sure that our selection is the text box itself. Let's try that again. I'm going to close my layout options. I'm going to click on this dotted line. I think what I had done is I had forgotten to close this box first. So we click on this so our box is selected and we choose center. Now we're going to do a shape fill and we want that to be plum accent one lighter 80 percent. And back over here in our drawing tools we have shape fill as one of our options. We can click here and it is the second row fifth column you'll see that kind of just puts a nice light purple behind that. Again, drawing your eye to that design element and uh, making it look a little bit neater. We're going to select Basics of Photography, our title, on page one. We don't want the section break indicator. Well, we don't have those um, those types of indicators on, so we're going to kind of trust that we didn't select it. Just don't select beyond the Y. And then we're going to click the Insert tab. And we're going to insert a word art with the style Fill Plum Accent 1 Shadow, first row, second column. It should be this one right here. And you'll notice it 
is a pre-designed style. You also notice as you're doing these shape fills and word arts, all of those colors are built around that theme that we chose at the very beginning of the document. So we get to keep all of those um, proper stylings, all those colors that do match, which is pretty cool. As long as we stay relatively within our, uh, our color options. And then we're going to change the text wrapping to top and bottom. I'm just going to go in this way and do a top and bottom, and you'll notice it doesn't work here in this simulator. This is one of those things that you have to do it the way they're expecting it to be done. And in this case, they are expecting it to be done through the layout options. And we do top and bottom. And then we'll close the layout options. And that is the end of Word Chapter 2 Skill Based Training.